Hello everyone, <clears throat> welcome to NPTEL course on Rural Water Resource Management. This is week 9, lecture 1. Let's do a recap of week 8 and what we looked at, what we discussed in week 8. And then I'll discuss what we are having to see in week 9. In week 8, we looked at rural water management issues. So what are the issues that are causing the water not to be used wisely and lack of water or impacting water security, what are the issues? We looked at capacity building where you may have the water, but if you do not have the right people to work together to conserve, to sustainably use water, that is an issue. That is called the need for capacity building and we looked at certain aspects. We looked at also infrastructure issues, especially maintenance and ownership. You might have a check dam, you might have a groundwater recharge system, but if it is not being maintained and no one takes care of it, then it is not going to be efficient enough. We also looked at data issues. As I said, you cannot monitor nor measure if you don't have observation networks. Similarly, if you cannot measure, you cannot monitor how groundwater or water discharge happens. And if you cannot monitor, you cannot manage. So you cannot measure if you don't have observation systems or other proxies like satellites. And if you cannot measure, you cannot monitor, you cannot manage. This is the line that a lot of uh, researchers use to say that you cannot <coughs> manage what you cannot monitor and measure. So measuring, monitoring is very, very important for water management, especially for rural water management. Coming to week nine, we will look at rural water resources management using infrastructure, which is engineered. So there are uh, multiple infrastructures available, but how do they differentiate between each other is mostly if it is engineered or a natural solution or a nature-based solution they call. So engineered is where a lot of engineering happens. You have to clear the land, level the land, etc. Whereas in nature-based solutions, you evolve with nature, you develop with nature, preserve nature, and then make it use for water resource management. Let us in this week look at the engineered solutions, which is mostly dams and canal systems for surface water. We will also look at once you dam the water, once you have canal systems, how do you use the water for irrigation? Having the water stored is one thing, but how can you use engineering solutions to better use the water is important. And that is where check dams and lift irrigation systems play a vital role. Then we will look at the Ganges water machine as an engineered solution for groundwater management, which uses groundwater recharge shafts. And another aspect is using technology to understand groundwater depletion and then communally use groundwater which is called Manage Act for Recharge with a program. So we look at all these different technologies and engineered solutions where you would either make a dam large scale uh, infrastructure or a small scale like a Manage Act for Recharge, a check dam or a, or a pond that recharge the groundwater and you can use it later. the water issues, what are the available infrastructure in India? So even before we go into the uh, optimizing these uh, engineered solutions, in this lecture, we would look at what are the available structures and how are they useful. 
again, I would like to restress the fact that rural water management needs water security for all. Okay, and water security is defined as do we have enough drinking water? Is the water available for economic solutions based on all livelihoods? Is there enough water for ecosystem services, which includes biotic and abiotic uh, processes? And is it enough to uh, buffer us during climate change or in term, other terms, resilience to climate change? <coughs> we have already discussed this in detail in the last lecture, but I'm just bringing you to think about this water security in terms of an engineered structure. So already you could see ecosystem may not be that appropriate because most of the engineered structures have to uh, take some parts of the ecosystem out. Okay, it could be birds, animals, could be your land, soil, forest, etc. However, it does satisfy all the other things. It does give you water for uh, climate change, uh, drinking water, economic development, hydropower, etc. You will have to balance the water use ac ac according to all these four themes. Sometimes you may have to say that it is highly weighted on, for example, drinking water. That is, I have to clear the land uh, and sacrifice a little bit of the ecosystem. So this is where a give and take does happen in engineered solutions. The biggest issues for rural water management and water security are for rural systems. Let us see why does that happen? Why does rural um, system, rural uh, entities have big water management issues, especially um, for using engineered solutions? Let's differentiate Karif and Rabi cropping. Okay, so we know that Karif and Rabi are the two major cropping uh, scenarios in India, uh, other than the winter cropping, whereas Karif is the rain fed irrigation or the monsoon water is kept for irrigating the field, which means a farmer need not go every day and open the uh, channel for the water to go into the field and, and uh, water the plants it gets automatically watered by the rainfall. However, if there is a change in rainfall pattern or if not enough rainfall happens, then the farmer is at loss. The next is the rabi cropping, where it happens predominantly in the non-monsoon season. And the non-monsoon season um, happens either before the monsoon, the Karif season or sometimes after the Karif, after the winter, etc. So Rabi is mostly dependent on these structures to supply surface. Let's see um, what are the issues here. So Karif cropping is the rainfall season crop, mostly dependent on monsoon rainfall because there are other rainfall also where it comes intermittently, but most of the rainfall is kept in the two major monsoon seasons. Okay, the southeast northwest monsoons. Uh, if monsoon delays or fails, then the cropping shifts to irrigation. Again, if a land is there and it gets rainfall, it is a karif or monsoon crop. However, if the monsoon fails or delays, then a farmer has to pump and then put water or open a canal and put water. That work entitles it as a irrigation. Rabi cropping is augmented growing, where you have to supply water for growth, irrigated by multiple sources, depending on the location, depending on the crop, and access to energy. It is different sources. The most important source in India is the groundwater. Both deep and shallow aquifers act like a bank to store water during the monsoon season. And when the non monsoon season happens, water is taken out from the aquifer and applied to the fields. Then you have surface water stored from uh, big dams uh, or smaller dams, medium dams. And then the water is routed to the fields through canals in Rabi period. And then you have water markets where people sell water tankers to support uh, whatever livelihood you want have. It could be industry, it could be <coughs> agriculture or even domestic use. 
So water markets are available and that can also augment rubby crops. This course is going to focus on the engineered irrigation water supply, uh, but such infrastructure can also aid in Karif season. As I said, uh, mostly this lecture series, uh, in this particular week, we would look at engineered solutions for irrigation water supply. But remember that even these irrigation water are used in the Karif season, which is a monsoon, especially now during the climate change scenarios where too much flooding happens or too much water is given as rainfall within two, three months rather than six months. So there is more water on the streets, more water on the field as flooding. Whereas in a uh, rabi season, you will have no monsoon. So you will eventually have to use water from these irrigation structures. We should start with surface water and then focus more on groundwater. This lecture, we would, uh, let's look at the uh, surface water storage infrastructures. And the first key one is the large dams in India. India has ma many major rivers. You could see here as the Ganges, the uh, Brahmaputra, Indus, part of it comes here, uh, but mostly Narmada, Tapti, uh, and you have Krishna, Kaveri, Pennar, all these major, major rivers. Many major rivers have irrigation dams almost uh, by default, all these big irrigation uh, schemes are uh, being supported by these major rivers, Kaveri, for example. With dams, there is considerable command area. Okay, So each dam will have a command area. When we discussed about watershed area and how these water boundaries are made, I clearly explained that each dam will have a command area. We will discuss that also in today's class. This engineer structure caters to irrigation needs because uh, it is made by cement, clay, sand, uh, and a lot of concrete. Uh, it is not a nature-based solution. Okay, it is. Uh, <laughs> engineer to suit the water supply and water delivery to the field. Let's take one example. And it's not only the major uh, rivers that I tell you. I'll show you here that this uh, uh, image from the book Raghunath does not have all the uh, other smaller major rivers in a state-wise. This is national uh, major rivers, but then there is also state-wise major rivers. Uh, and here you could see that uh, a snapshot of the reservoir database uh, in Tamil Nadu. So reservoir is also another name for dams. And you have a good website where you can click on these uh, dams, individual dams, and get the daily water level. Uh, so and if you can subtract the previous day and today's water level, you know how much water is released if there is a loss. Uh, if there is a gain, from yesterday to today, then the water has increased in the dam, which means there has been a rainfall or a rainfall associated base flow or groundwater flow, etc. So this uh, easy way of monitoring has been done in the government board, where they keep all these data in um, online version where you can download uh, quickly when, whenever you need. It gives you the year of construction. Okay, uh, and also uh, capacities and uh, um, full levels, uh, how much capacity is available, gross, etc. You could see that even ancient um, um, uh, structures, engineered structures are there. So engineer doesn't mean that you have to bring a big bulldozer and, and build it. Uh, in those days of the Pallava period, for example, they used uh, elephants to bring the rocks, clear the land and then make the dam. Uh, or the reservoir. So all these are available, uh, very beautiful structures, uh, still working, still uh, catering to the irrigation water demand in Tamil Nadu. Same way for other states also, you have these websites. Let's discuss the command area, as I said, for irrigation dams. What is the command area? The canal command area is the area around the dam, which directly gets irrigation water from the dam. Okay, so uh, for example, I'll just double uh, 
draw something for you to show. Uh, first, you have the dam. Okay. Each dam would have a area on the top and on the bottom. Okay, so this is called the catchment area of the dam, where all the rainfall water pools together and comes to the dam. And then you have a command area. So this is the dam water, and then you have a command area where it is more like this, and each uh, village or street would get water from these dams. So you are giving off some of the land here to uh, save water and then slowly release it to the downstream of the dam, which is called the command area or irrigation area. Okay. Example, the Sardar Sarvar Dam you have 88,000 square kilometers in Gujarat. So you have uh, the canal uh, area and all the area where the canal serves the water uh, from the SS dam, uh, that is where you have the water spread or the irrigation water being distributed. And that distribution uh, uh, takes in together the command area. Because of this, your crop area increases. So I'm just taking a case study of Gujarat from the previous uh, slide that I've established a dam. Okay, so the dam and the uh, uh, command area, which is the in black, uh, uh, red color, while as the black is the canal network. So you could see here that the water is uh, stored and then released along the canals. The canal density might be high in some regions and low in other regions, which is fine. However, the canal distributes water to the red line, which is the command area, which is the area that the irrigation happens. Okay, Just because a canal is passing doesn't mean that the water is going to be served because it may be lined and the water is going to a different location. So uh, understand that um, from here to here, there is a command area. And if they increase the uh, network of these canals, there will be more command area. You could see the other side, the other side of the major canal, there is no irrigation, no command area, only down because it is elevation also, they don't want to pump it, but not, not even small pumps are used to take the water. Most of the water goes to the down uh, stream locations, which have been chosen for this dam. So the crop area has increased. That is what we found in a study that because of the command area, there has been a crop increase. So NDBI is an indicator using satellite images, which tells you about the agricultural activity in a land or any uh, plant trees activity. Since we are looking at agriculture area, we're going to just look at the agricultural activity. So in monsoon uh, season, during the monsoon, uh, the NDBI 2003, you could see where the gray color is, that is where agriculture was happening. Okay, and in Rabi uh, season, there is this area which has been catered and most of the area <laughs> is being catered either by groundwater or a canal network. So you can see all the canal network, which we discussed in the previous slide, getting water. Okay, so all the monsoon season water is stored in 2003 in the dams and then released in 2004 to the irrigation area or command area. Let's look at the summer. So this goes to the next monsoon season also, but just before the monsoon, you have the summer. And in the summer season also, some uh, water is remaining. So there is some irrigation happening in these areas. So what is the total from 2003 to 2004? Uh, you have no crop only in this area because all three seasons, there's no water. Uh, and mostly it is a sal high salinity in these areas. So they don't want to uh, grow crops in these areas, mostly the Kutch and other areas. However, there is three season crops. If you add one, two, and three, um, you can see that the third season, the red color uh, is the winter season. And then the green color is your uh, Rabi season. And then the first season is given in yellow. So there is an overlap. So one piece of land, can also be used for multi-cropping season. Okay, 
So if, for example, I'm putting one crop uh, in three months, then after the next uh, season, which is the rabi season, I'll clear the land and put another crop, okay? We're not talking about sustainability, fertility of the land. We're only talking about water availability and growing the plant. So in Gujarat, you could see that the three season crops are present in this area, which means in the red area, three times the crop has been taken in a single year. Uh, whereas in the ye uh, yellow season, it is only one, which is mostly the monsoon. Uh, but then in the <coughs> second two season areas, you could see most of Saurashtra, most of the canal command area given in these areas. So this is how a structure, uh, engineered concrete large structure can increase the water storage, thereby increasing the agricultural productivity. So uh, as per the Green Revolution, an increase in water storage uh, can um, lead to better crop growing periods and also better crop productivity. Uh, so both green revolution, other measures like engineering, technology, uh, your uh, pumps, uh, all the electricity, fertilizers, all these aspects that went into green revolution also had excess water due to the surface storage structures and now the crops are growing. So this has influenced the crop area increase well, as you see between two years, two uh, large difference of years, 2003 to 2004 and 2010, 2011, you could see that almost 10 years difference, um, but the cropping area has increased and the number of times the crop has been grown has increased. So the no crop region stays the same, uh, whereas the winter season crop PCDI non-monsoonal <coughs> is given in number one, which is the yellow color in both the regions, whereas the two cropping, uh, winter and summer season rabi cropping has increased greatly uh, along the um, uh, north and uh, southern parts of Gujarat uh, and also in the Saurashtra region. You can see that a lot of red color is coming. So what has driven this? This has been driven by your structure, your uh, uh, water structure, the major structure for dam, SSP, SSP dam, uh, and then <coughs> the canal network, just not having the dam would uh, be there. SS dam is there, but you have to take the water and supply it to the villages, which is the channel wide network and how canals are running. So wherever the canals are running, the cropping uh, area increased, thereby giving more profit to farmers. But not only that, we also saw that groundwater recharge increase in these regions, because when you send water in a canal, the canal is not lined in the bottom and water can recharge. So that aspect was taken by the uh, film director and captured very well in the movies for groundwater uh, related documentaries. If you can see that um, um, a lot of these uh, movies um, which are and documentaries which are made on green revolution, uh, you could see how groundwater is being captured and used well for uh, recharge and other estimates. Okay. In this uh, new study, what uh, the authors found is that not only does the channel bring water, but also the channel gives water to the groundwater network because these canals are not lined. When they are not lined, the water can release into the groundwater recharge. But we are here only focusing on the dams and infrastructure. What I'm saying is there's also indirect recharge that can happen because of water flowing in canals and recharging the network. That is why even though the other regions are turning red in, in um, the peak summer season, wherever the canal is flowing, uh, the water is still available. Example here. And it is done by like this. So when the water is released, multiple ditches and uh, smaller canals can be dug and taken out from the major canal, which comes from the engineered structure of dam, 
uh, and that water can be intermittently supplied so that the groundwater recharge happens. And this has been uh, very carefully uh, explained in this study by uh, Lena um, Singh in 2011, um, which is a very famous method called the ditch and furrow method. You take the water from your main channel, make smaller channels, and then supply water in, in between the channels, thereby increasing the time the water spends with the ground for recharge. Again, the, all this water is from the dam water. So your dam water is not only giving water for agriculture, but indirectly it can recharge also. So let's look at <coughs> the pros and cons of these centralized large infrastructures for rural water management. The pros are decentralized water supply for irrigation from a centralized dam storage. This, what does it mean centralized? Okay, so you have um, a village and then the village has a dam here, for example. This is a centralized location which supplies water to the entire village through canals. Okay, whereas a decentralized would be uh, a small check dam which gives water to this village, a small check dam which gives water to this village, small check dam giving water to this village. So there are differences between decentralized and a centralized system. However, the pros, the benefits are um, you can use the centralized dam to make smaller decentralized units because the canal is taking water to the village and from the village you can have a ditch and furrow method which can spread the water into multiple multiple locations thereby making it a decentralized Land canals promote groundwater recharge also, which we saw in the previous slide in Gujarat where groundwater recharge was happening, even though the other regions where there is no canal network, the water was not recharging. With the demand estimates, a superintendent engineer can calculate the demand, water mass, water balance approach um, for the dam. And then uh, um, he can say, he or she can say, this is how much water is coming into the dam. This is how much is lost to evaporation and uh, transpiration along the banks, but I will still have water for supplying for other purposes. And that actually gives information for the release um, of uh, water into the agricultural network. Also, these centralized big dams can act as a buffer for storing the flood water. For example, the lakes and uh, ponds that are monitored in Tamil Nadu and Chennai, um, they have to be on alert when there is a big flood. Because when there's a flood, the water in the water structure increases and they cannot release it if the downstream is already flooded. So they have to be carefully, slowly releasing it so that it doesn't affect the other floods. In other words also, when there is a flood supposed to happen, the water can be stored in these large structures so that there won't be a flood happening in the downstream location. The cons, the opposite for benefits. Okay, let's see what are the cons. Care has to be taken that the water is not lost before the canal uh, and area farmers get water. Because most of the time what you see is there is recharge, there is evaporation loss. So there are multiple losses that can drive the groundwater out um, uh, through irrigation and other sources or put more surface water into groundwater uh, and thereby reducing the canal water to go into the farm. Our aim when you build the dam is to store the water and supply to the farmer. The supply network, which is a canal, should not be losing so much water that at the end of the day, a farmer doesn't get water. So you have to maintain this delivery supply system. However, that is costly and requires large clearances and the dam requires larger area of uh, infrastructure uh, and clearing of the land because you cannot store water on a tree, right? You have to clear the land, make it into a depth so that you can capture the volume and store the volume. So in this lecture today, we have looked at uh, one type of rural water resource management using um, engineered structures, which is your large dams. In the following lectures, we will look at multiple, multiple sources. Thank you. I'll conclude with this slide.